I'm Nyoko, and welcome back to year 13 of Galaxy Clan. I have the Galaxy Clan playlist linked below or in a card above if you're new or if you want a refresher. And happy early Halloween! Real quick, I did actually make this odd bat design that you can get on a sticker or a bunch of other things that are on my Redbubble, which should be on the last link in the description. And this year had a lot of drama, but at the same time, I used this as a bit of a break year. So while I could have made an animatic section or done even more bonus pictures for some things, I decided to rest up for next year. That being said, mass extinctions in game triggered finally, and the first one to do so was actually one that didn't kill cats immediately, but seven cats got taken by two legs all at once on the very first moon of this year, and you'll find out who got taken and their status currently as the video goes on. But besides that, we did have some deaths, so let's get into Star Clan and cry. Because we're starting with the four moon old Weasel Kit. Sadly, Weasel Kit was taken by a hawk on the very first moon of the year, right after everyone got taken by two legs. Which is just so sad to me. I was really interested in her morbid curiosity trait since that turns into ghost sight, and also the fact that she was a cute little calico and we only really had torties and only like two calicos in the clan. But kit deaths are always so sad, and I hoped that we would be behind this now that year 12 was over, but, you know, it'd be like that. I hope she's happy to see her moms and egret kid again, at the least. But yeah, I can't really say much about her since this nervous baby died so soon. Her life was short, and it was really mostly spent getting semi-playfully bullied by her brother. But next up is a cat that you guys have never met before this. The 38-moon-old Gloomy Bamboo Spark who was a good mediator and a former kitty pet. Holopath and Cinnamon Feather found him abandoned on the Thunderpath, screaming for his two legs to come back. This was the moon after a bunch of our cats were taken, so I was on the hunt to invite kitty pets to the clan. They might have information about the missing clanmates, after all. I'm sad to see him go because he was super cute and he was doing all right in the clan, things considered. He got an apprentice and he was doing really well and he also invited another kitty pet who was abandoned. I'm also rolling on any of these kitty pets about whether or not they've been fixed before they joined. And he was fixed, but it doesn't really matter anymore. But Bamboo Spark actually died of poisoning after eating tainted prey that an apprentice caught and he wasn't the only one who died. The 18 moon old Fallow Dapple did actually come back to us this year, but she sadly died to the poisoning as well. Two legs had stolen one of her siblings, and her last remaining sibling was waiting at the border for to tell her the news. The next moon, Fernheart was actually arguing with a Creek Clan cat who I decided was Fallow Dapple's dad, Thunder Spirit. And on that same moon, Fallow Dapple came back to Galaxy Clan. I think the thought process was Fallow Dapple had lost so much family while she was separated from them and it was just cruel. During her warrior ceremony, she wished Butterfly Catcher was there. And beyond that, she was actually kind of bratty and rude to certain cats, starting arguments and being difficult kind of on purpose seemingly. She was only really nice to her one family member in the clan, but I wish she still stuck around. She was kind of feisty. But I will say she isn't the only current mean girl of the clan, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, we just got her back and we immediately lost her. I'm so sad. But another casualty to this poisoning was tragically the 45 moon old cinnamon feather, and I am so upset. I loved my adorable cinnamon roll that was just always ready to fight despite never looking threatening. She was just so sweet and patient with her apprentice. She comforted Wormpaw when he felt like a failure, and she died right after he became a warrior. And the saddest fact of Cinnamon Feather dying, to me, is that she actually became mates with Holopath just two moons before she died. They had cute training patrols, and she snuck into his nest. It was, it was really cute. I was so happy that they were happy together, and Holopath was doing good. And I, I'm just so sad. This is unfair. Cinnamon Feather finally got the guy that she's been crushing on, and the game just had to take it away. On to the last death of the year. The 41 moon old Burnet Flicker also died due to the poison prey this year. That makes three years in a row that we've lost a deputy, and I want to scream. Brightstar really seemed to like Burnet Flicker and gave her another apprentice, this time being one of his own kits, but sadly Burnet Flicker died before they finished training. She mostly had been training her apprentice and organizing patrols this year. Nothing too extreme, but she was making the clan run really smoothly and was friendly with some new members, making them feel welcome to the clan. I'm really sad. I wanted a potential showdown again with Burnet Flicker, or maybe even Burnet Star, 
and silk fur in the future, but sadly this won't be the case unless it happens in the afterlife. But yeah, four deaths after an apprentice caught tainted prey is quite a big yikes. We'll get to who that was later, but for now, let's start getting into the living cats that are currently in the clan. Starting with the 98 moon old Bright Star, who lost a life to Yellowcough and is down to four now. Fernheart is also here and is 90 moons old. Bright Star's had a stressful year as always, but thankfully no outright murders at least. He was distraught after Two Legs took his clanmates, but he's been doing his best to find information and get everyone home. Having a decently high success rate, actually. He's been thinking of battle strategies and is aware of the fact that both Frecklespot and Minsplash are causing some issues in the Dark Forest right now. He doesn't know how many cats in his clan are actually involved in this, and honestly, neither do I. Some of them are a bit iffy, and I have some theories, but I'll leave it up to interpretation for now. But he doesn't really want to distrust anyone, and he's worried. I'll get into who exactly told him information as we get to them. But on Fernhart's side, as stated earlier, she argued with Thunder Spirit to get Fallow Dapple back, but after she died, Fernhart wondered if that was a good decision. She had just wanted to cheer up Fallow's one remaining sibling, but it kind of backfired. She also took an unspecified clanmate out to a beautiful spot in the territory just for fun, and I kind of like to think that was possibly one of her kids that she was trying to cheer up, but leave your guesses if you have any at the end. She also gave someone a super cute gift, which I'll get into later. It makes me sad, but it's cute. She's noticed that Brightstar seems to be in his head a lot right now, and he hasn't really told her anything related to the Dark Forest, but she knows something's up. Fernhart is also concerned with some of her kit's actions, and she isn't the happiest right now, but we'll get to that later. Now, on to who Brightstar decided would be his fourth deputy. It's actually the 62 moon old hollow path, which is very interesting to me. He was part of a patrol that tried to investigate a two leg nest to find clues of the missing clanmates, but he was scared away by two leg kits. Holopath being more motivated since his sister is actually one of the cats that was taken. As earlier mentioned, he became mates of Cinnamon Feather, but sadly that was short-lived. But he actually found an abandoned kit shortly after her death, who he seems to want to adopt but is afraid to. We'll get to them later. Holopath knows that he's stuck in a path that would put them in danger. He's continued being trained by Frecklespot, now playing along even more, because he's watching after another cat that she's training. He still doesn't trust her at all, and he had the status of daydreaming slaughtering every cat that he despises, while still liking everyone in the clan, so I'm still pretty sure that's about Frecklespot. Or potentially Silkfur, we'll get to that. Because he also got burned, and I wish I was making that up. Um, I didn't want to run a fire generator again, so I decided that Minsplash and or Silkfur have figured out how to create fire in the dark forest, and he got burned there while they were messing with it. Brightstar confronted him after seeing he woke up hurt, and Holopath told him that he's not evil, and he feels this is the best way to know what their unseen enemies are up to. He doesn't want to let too much slip in case Frecklespot is listening, but he did reveal that he's not the only one going to the dark forest. Holopath also was encouraging Brightstar to start a war the moon that he was burned, and I believe Holopath wants to kill the Dark Forest cats, but Brightstar doesn't want to resort to bloodshed. Also, in StarClan, both Kendra and Squirrelpaw saw Holopath's future demise, and that makes me really nervous. Thank you, StarClan. I was on the lookout for prophecies or something, and you're out there predicting Holopath dying. Oh boy. But yeah, Brightstar chose to trust him for now, and the clan believes Holopath got burned from a two-legged campfire, which is on brand for this scarred up boy. In the medicine cat den, we have the 23 moon old strange flame bear, and he was actually one of the cats taken by two legs at the start of the year, but he eventually found his way home. During his absence, the clan was left without a medicine cat, but we'll get to that in a bit. I took note of everything lost cats were up to in order to figure out what they were doing, and Flamepot was mostly just concerned about the clan and hoped they were doing okay without him. He was really shaken up by a nightmare that he couldn't wake up from, which is concerning, and I thought that might be Dark Forest related, but we'll see. And he made a hesitant deal with a rogue, and I flipped a coin to see if it was silk fur, but nope, just a random cat. I imagine they were hurt, and he promised to help them if they could help him get home. Considering that he showed back up in the clan the next moon, he had been gone for nine moons, and StarClan granted him his medicine cat name immediately. He could see his mom, Butterfly Catcher, and the Starry Cats. Also, any of the cats who were lost are now fixed because they were all gone longer than three moons, so Flame Bear won't be able to have kits in the future. 
I also gave him a collar with a bear tag on it, as well as a gardenia flower to keep with the herb medicine cat theme and to remember his sister. I didn't really give collars to anyone else, but I figured he's strange and it fits with him being weird. After returning, Flame Bear took over training the clan's medicine cat apprentice, and he also insisted that everyone ate chamomile leaves at Moon High on the last moon of the year. And that, <laughs> that kind of sounds cultish, but I looked these up and I think these are traveling herbs based on researching. So I think some cats might be going on a journey to find the remaining lost clan mates. Let me know what you guys think, but as for his apprentice, the 15 moon old Beetle Paw chose to become a medicine cat apprentice after he received an omen from Cinderspeck as a kit. His mom, Swanleaf, also kept having statuses of watching slash talking to him, whatever, and looking after him. And I chose to believe that she was guiding him from Star Clan and doing her best to train him in the absence of an actual head medicine cat. Notably, the omen was sent on the same moon that Weasel Kit died and Flame Paw was lost. And I kind of have a theory that Weasel Kit was meant to become a medicine cat, but after her death, Star Clan was nervous and Beetle Paw had to step up. Concerningly, Beetle Paw is bloodthirsty and he was struggling a lot as the only medicine cat. He keeps wanting to learn battle moves just in case, and he's argued with a lot of cats on patrol. Fallow Dapple in particular really made him mad, refusing to take orders from him when he was already very stressed and angry. Other clans have asked to borrow herbs, and Beetle Paw had to turn them away, not willing to admit that he had none. I'm sure that was so helpful during the poisoning outbreak. Um, Silk Fur is definitely sabotaging our herbs. Beetle Paw consistently fails to find anything, even with the guidance of his mom. He was also curious about death fairies and was wondering what's the use in wasting herbs on elders. And I'm kind of very concerned about this boy. And I was going to switch him back over to being a warrior apprentice after we gained another medicine cat, since he seemed miserable despite choosing this path. But after Flame Bear returned, Beetle Paw was actually a lot more responsive and was intently listening to him. He seems calmer and more grateful for his new mentor, so I'm going to keep an eye on him, but he's going to stay a medicine cat for now. Let me know what you guys think. On to our mediator. Dark Whistle is now 68 moons old, and he blamed himself for Weasel Kit, having witnessed another cat he loved die in front of him while he failed to save them. He suffered from even more nightmares. And he also lost another one of his kits to the two legs, so he wasn't really doing the best. He was also debating if being a mediator was a good choice, but he did smooth over some border disputes between Sharp Clan, as well as attempted to smooth over some love drama that's happening right now. Earlier in the year, he also invited the Lonely Stag Kit to come watch him perform duties, which I thought was super cute. Side note, I feel like mediators can have other additional jobs, like building and potentially being perma queens or den dads, depending on what they like to do, so they're not just sitting around camp doing nothing. I also imagine that some of them do indeed go out and hunt. Um, either way, Dark Whistle also isn't the only mediator now, and we'll get to who that is later. But for now, onto our warriors. Starting with some new faces. Here is the 113 moon old Daring Meringue, who is a formidable fighter and very clever. Along with his mate, the 107 moon old Charismatic Burrow Frith, who is a great mediator. So these two immediately had a whirlwind romance and became mates. Um, Meringue joined the clan first when he was invited by Bamboo Spark after he was also abandoned. He seemed to struggle to fit in at first and was seen talking to a kitty pet, but they ran away when a patrol approached. On the next moon, Burrowfriff showed up on the time skip, and then they became mates a few moons later, so I'm choosing to say that they were always mates, but Burrowfriff took a couple moons to the side that she wanted to join the clan. Also, Burrowfrift rolled to have the hairless tail, so that's not a scar, but she did join with belly scars, and I made her odds to have been fixed 75% instead of 50%, but she did roll that she's not fixed, so now I don't really know why she has those scars. Give me some ideas below, I guess. Meringue also rolled to not be fixed, so these two, despite their age, could theoretically have kits in the future. Even if they don't, they're pretty cute. Meringue and Burrowfrift also chased a rogue off together, so that's fun. Moving on, another new face in the clan is the 99 moon old Ambitious Sherb, who has helpful insight, and she actually joined on the very last moon of this year during a time skip. I only really was planning on inviting two new cats, but I guess that raised our reputation of outsiders enough to the point where we now just get cats joining randomly on time skips, and it seems quite common. <laughs> 
There's not too much to her, but her history tab says that she lived a life as a loner until something terrible happened, which made her leave her home behind. And she also joined with Crow Feathers already. She seems like she has a story and I'm very interested. But yeah, can't wait to get to know her. Also, Sherb and Meringue are both the names of Animal Crossing characters, and I kind of love it. I know I'm a nerd. But next up is Whispreys, who is now 55 moons old, and she was also taken by the two legs, but she came back. She was gone for seven moons and was the first cat to return of any of the missing ones. While she was lost, she was missing a lot of cats, and then she scented a Galaxy Clan patrol fairly quickly and was on the right track to come home. Though when she did come back, she was telling cats about really weird dreams and thought she was going crazy. So I'm wondering if Star Clan is trying to tell her something or if she's just upset and in distress at certain cats that are slash were lost at the time and that she's not really handling it well. She seems kind of spaced out and it upsets me. She's not doing well, but I'm happy she came back and I'm hoping she does better. Next up is the 46 moon old Pound Splinter. First, Fernhart gave him oak leaves to wear, which just kicks me with the reminder of his dad Oak Spring. It's really cute, but ow, that hurts. Interestingly, now him and Silkfur are wearing accessories that remind me of both of their parents. The Bright Fern family in general seems to like Pound Splinter, and he received another one of their kits as an apprentice. But interestingly, Stoneleaf visited him in his dreams, where I imagine he told him to spill the beans to Bright Star about Minsplash. Pound Splinter went on a long walk and fought after that, and then I sent him on a patrol with Bright Star, where he did actually tell Bright Star he had a vision in game. Pound Splinter admitted that he and Silkfur trained with Mintsplash in the Dark Forest when they were younger, and told him that Silkfur's actions are being puppeteered by Mintsplash. He apologized for not bringing it up sooner and said he hasn't been back to the Dark Forest since the fire, but Stoneleaf seemed concerned, so he had to bring it up. Brightstar thanked him and told him to keep staying out of there, but he'll handle it himself. I think despite Pound Splinter's interest in battling, he fears going back to the Dark Forest. He might also fear whether or not Star Clan will accept him if he goes back. He told the warriors to get ready for battle, though no one knows exactly why. Pound Splinter was also the first one to bring any of this up, which led to Brightstar being more concerned when he found out things from Hollow Path later. And Pound Splinter also misses his sister, Burnet Flicker, and he's worried about signs that he's seeing in his apprentice as well. But next up is the 45 moon old Umber Curl. Cloud J is one of the cats that was taken, and that seems to really have shaken her up. Despite her rude way of asking him out last year, she seems to really care about him, and her romantic bar is actually in the love section. She's consistently had the saddest that she wants to go on a quest, and one moon, a time skip stated that she went missing for a few days, and then she came back with a collar. So in my eyes, she was looking for Cloud J and the others, getting caught but quickly escaping. Luckily, she wasn't ever lost and didn't get fixed. Beyond that, she took over training Burnet Flicker's apprentice after her death, but they didn't really like her. But yeah, she really seems to want to find Cloud J. Next up is the 28 moon old branch deer, and he actually had a funny patrol where he rolled in deer droppings to hide his scent while hunting. And while that is disgusting, I think that's kind of hilarious considering his name. He did end up catching a ton of prey. He also seems to realize that something is up with his former mentor, Holopath, and wonders how he's doing. And he did ask out Hope Fern this year, and she said yes, so the two are mates now. Though it's been very interesting so far, to say the least. He caught her touching noses with a loner and chased the loner off. They've also been fighting a lot, and Branch Deer found an older kit this year, and while not officially adopting him, I think Hope Fern felt insecure, and the perfect way to fix these relationship issues surely is to have kits of their own. These poor dumb cats, I swear. Um, Branch Deer really likes Hope Fern and loves his kits, but there's also a concerning small dislike bar for Hope Fern as well. There's more to this relationship, but I'll get to it when we get to the nursery. Also, side note, Freckle Spot was thinking of walking in Branch Deer's dreams, which concerns me. So now I'm wondering if he might be involved too. I'm looking at all of these cats with a lot of suspicion right now, but we'll have to see. Now let's see a bunch of new warriors. Starting with the 24 moon old adventurous Prickleflek, who is now a good mediator. He was made a warrior on the first moon of this year, but he had his focus beyond the horizon despite being honored for his daring nature. He was in a numb haze in the first few moons because Rainpaw was missing. He had two litter mates and he felt sad that none of them could become warriors with him. He's starting to get some life to him after a bit, but 
he's snapped back in the clan life for the most part, but he was definitely really upset at the beginning of the year. But now he even has deputy goals and an apprentice. He also was a part of the patrol that tried to investigate the two-leg nest. Now, you might notice that he's uh, kind of looking like hollow path, to say the least. Long story short, he has bad luck with dogs, and he keeps running to them anyway. He got his tail mangled, and then on patrol, he ran into Sharp Clan scent, which when he followed, he found a Sharp Clan cat in a tree, and then immediately got ambushed by a dog. This time, his leg got permanently injured, and he's reminding me of Pamper Storm now, which is sad. Um, then finally, on a time skip, he lost his ear entirely while saving Pansy from a dog, so now he's half deaf. This guy really can't catch a break. He also was upset at a certain apprentice after they poisoned the clan, but we'll get to them later. On the positive side, he went on a cute moonlit stroll with his crush, and he still really likes her. Which, speaking of, Lightning Flight is now 23 moons old, compassionate, a great mediator, and a good kit sitter. And she also has a pretty big crush on him at this point as well. Lightning Paw was really sad when Flame Paw was taken, and she waited at the Creek Clan border to tell Fallow Paw the news leading to her coming back to Galaxy Clan, where she helped keep her company at least until the poisoning incident. Lightning Flight got her warrior name at 13 moons old, and she was named after her exemplar. And she's honestly a ray of sunshine despite everything. She does clan mage chores with a smile, and she warned Creek Clan of a badger, probably looking out for her dad. She also caught a fish, which is so fitting with her bloodline. I've been on the lookout for anyone catching fish because I just think it's fun. She was so happy to see Flame Bear come back, and she's doing her best to stay positive. I'm still really rooting for her to become mates with Frickleflex, but I will point out that she has a small crush on someone else that I'll mention later. Side note, if she doesn't have kits in the future, then the garlic bloodline dies since Flame Bear got fixed. So in a bloodline preserving aspect, I really do hope that she has kits one day, also because she's a good kit sitter. But if she doesn't, oh well. Moving on to the Lavender Wisp kits. Starting with the 18 moon old newly named Wormshade, who is still nervous but is now a formidable fighter. He had a rocky apprenticeship filled with a lot of self-doubts and feeling like a failure, but he was always comforted by Cinnamon Feather. He became a warrior on the same moon she died, but right before. And he was honored for his judgment, but he was really upset at her death. This poor boy has a lot of worries, and he's had statuses of fearing that an eagle might get him, which I'm sure was put into his mind after seeing Weasel Kit get taken by a hawk. And he also repeatedly counts everyone in the clan to make sure no one's missing. The two legs situation really messed him up because he lost his mom and a sibling when it happened. So he has a lot of trauma related to cats just going missing. Luckily, they both actually came back. But with that said, Whispreeze literally gave him a sprig of lavender to wear in-game, and I'm crying. He already looked the most like Lavender Heather, please, you can't do this to me. Moving on, his sister is now named Pansy Bloom, and she is still playful, a good storyteller, and a good mediator. She's so silly. She returned two Bug Clan kits to their clan with Hopeburn, and side note, these are Blaze Hair's kits. And she's Swanleaf's mom, so that's fun little trivia for you. Pansy Paw also got injured by a badger, but that didn't really slow her down as she was almost immediately making faces whenever Fernhard's back was turned. This little goofball. She was honored for her perseverance at her warrior ceremony, but she kind of seems to get in trouble every now and again. She needed to get saved by Prickleflex from the dog, and turns out they're not all friendly like that one she saw in her first time out. She also was too busy climbing trees all day to do any of her duties at one point, and some cats are kind of upset at her, but I love her. Also, any of the Lavender Wisp kits that didn't get an accessory in-game got one from me. So I gave Pansy Bloom a pansy, of course. Next up is the newly named Brindlehale, who remains strict and is a good fighter and speaker. She was also one of the cats taken by two legs, and she came back quite late into the year, gaining her warrior name at 16 moons old and being honored for her loyalty. Though sadly, she is also fixed. While she was lost, she was missing her mentor Branch Deer's guidance and kept hoping her littermates were okay. She thought she spotted Fernheart and then the next moon she came home, so I guess she really did. She seems a little annoyed that Pansy Bloom hasn't matured at all, but she still really loves all her siblings. Also, she has the herb-covered pelt because she got it in-game and Bright Star of All Cats gave it to her, so that's fun trivia. Last up in the litter is Truffle Sprout, who is renamed yet again via community post, so thank you guys for helping me pick his suffix and voting. He also came out as trans this year, so we love that for him. I wish he still had Lavender Heather around, and I feel like they'd really bond over this. Like Wormshade, he also had a tough apprenticeship, fighting back tears after missing a catch, but Hollow Path was there for him. 
Like I said, Holopath really has a soft side when it comes to his apprentices. Trufflepaw and Wormpaw actually went on patrol a lot and they would give each other knowing glances when they could see that their mentors were obviously flirting with each other. Trufflesprout also became a warrior at 13 moons old and he was honored for his wisdom, but he wondered if that truly described him. He also hums to himself a lot and I feel like Holopath is reminded of Flax Roar when he hears it because she also does that. I also had to give Trufflesprout little mushrooms on his pelt for his accessory because of course I did. So I hope you guys like. On to the Bright Fern kits, starting with the 14 moon old Snip Cloud, who is bloodthirsty with a dark forest affinity. And dang it, Pound Splinter, you did it again. Um, he was his mentor and they saw a porcupine on their first patrol. Pound Splinter is really out here making all of Bright Star's kits bloodthirsty. Oops. Though in his defense, Snip Cloud has another mentor as well. He's continued visiting the dark forest and ran into Frecklespot, who introduced herself as his grandmother, with a fake smile that he didn't really see through. She's promised to make him strong and he fully believes her. He also knows that she's training Holopath and thinks that they're part of some cool secret club of strong cats. Though Holopath is mostly just attempting to make sure nothing bad happens to him. Snip Cloud believes even more in Freckle Spot after seeing Holopath is deputy now. And concerningly, he drew blood in battle training and has been butting heads with his sister. He became a warrior also at 13 moons old and was honored for his strength. Brightstar has suspicions that this might be the cat that Holopath mentioned is in the dark forest, but he doesn't really want to suspect his son. But yeah, Snip Cloud is showing some worrying signs. And side note, I feel like he's named after the missing Cloud J. But next is the Cold Lizard Snap, who is very clever and once again was named via community post. Thank you again. She tried to look bored when she was apprenticed to Burnet Flicker, but she was really excited on the inside. Being trained by the deputy is something she was really proud of, and she caught a mouse on her first patrol. She's been a golden child on patrols, and if any of the Bright Fern kids have kind of a stuck-up princess energy, it's Lizard Snap. She fully believes that she's better than everyone, and she knows what Snipcloud is doing. She has argued and fought with him on multiple occasions. They actually have a decent dislike for each other, which is concerning again. And I think Snippaw wanted to bring her to train with him, but she said that he was being stupid, which he got mad at. I also think she might have been the cat that he drew blood against when they were training. She was really upset when Burnet Flicker died and started a fight with the apprentice that caught sick prey, which I promise we'll get to. Um, Umbercurl, as I said, took over her training, which she wasn't happy about, and Lizard Snap was honored for her cleverness during her warrior ceremony. Lizard Snap also has a crush on another cat, and we'll get to them in a bit, but I'm rooting for her. And last of the litter is the wise magpie egg, who is a good hunter, and he's honestly the good child of this litter. He's just sweet. And he was apprenticed to Bamboo Spark, actually. The first thing he wanted to do was make sure everyone had fresh bedding, and then he immediately found and invited Meringue to join. They had many nice training sessions and suggested a great place to hunt. He also gave somber advice to the apprentice that caused the poison deaths, his mentor having been one of the deaths. Brightstar personally took over finishing his training and Lizard Snap was a little jealous of her brother that their dad chose him over her. In the end, he just gained his warrior name at 14 moons old and he seems to be happy, but he was honored for his insight and he seems like a cat that takes things slow but thinks about things a lot, so so he might have some suspicions about his brother. But next up is the 14 moon old Yarrow Patch, who is loyal and a great speaker. She and her brother were very upset when Cloud J was taken before they even left the nursery, and with him gone, they had clouded minds leading to a lot of mishaps on training patrols. Yarrowpaw was apprenticed to Lightning Flight and was ambitious, but she missed a rabbit on her very first patrol. She also failed to catch a mouse as well. She eventually saw a large, strange acting rabbit that she caught and proudly bought back to camp. And warning for a picture going up, it's kind of spooky and shows leaking Star Clan cats' mouths, if that makes sense. Going up in 3, 2, 1. Yarrowpaw was horrified after she killed four cats with her rabbit, one of which being the deputy, and she's been haunted by nightmares, and the picture is gone now. The mistake was a slap of reality to her, and a lot of cats were upset at her, but Lightning Flight was there. Yarrowpaw then worked really hard to prove herself again and actually became a warrior at 11 moons old, being honored for her passion. Of all the cats to become a warrior early this year, I was not expecting her and it was something that Lizard Snap was kind of mad at. I'm hoping she does better now, and I feel really bad for her. She feels pretty alone in the clan. Moving on though, we have the 14 moon old loyal Stone Fawn, 
who is a formidable fighter and a good storyteller. And I'm first going to say that when she was still a Kit, I noticed that she had a crush already. Stone Kit was crushing on Lizard Kit, which was adorable. Looking at the notebook, I saw that Lizard Kit had pranced around in front of Stone Kit, and that just kind of has my heart. Lizard Kit was showing off from day one, and Stone Kit is there for it. And I'm happy to inform that now that Stone Fawn and Lizard Snap have a, are older, they have a mutual crush on each other. So we might have more potential lesbians. Let's go. <laughs> I'm really rooting for them and I am such a sucker for childhood crushes. Stonepaw was apprenticed to Prickleflek and she smiled at the stars knowing that Emerald Jumble was watching. I'm sure she was thinking of her brother Trout Kid as well. She saw a passing loner on her first patrol and she actually failed to catch a lizard as one of her patrols. And I hope that's not foreshadowing. Clan Jen, please let them be happy. Um, Lizard Snap actually seems to be nice to her, purring at her lame jokes. And Stone Fawn became a warrior at 13 moons old and was honored for her generosity. In the Apprentice Den, there's actually only one right now, the nine moon old Grumpy Condor Paw, who is an avid play fighter. He was found abandoned by Branch Deer when he was only three moons old, and then he was raised by the clan as a whole. Also, his tail isn't an injury, it was just born like that. He had been daydreaming as a kid, but I think he got annoyed at how Branch Deer seemingly would get in trouble if he spent too much time with him, leading to his current grumpy personality. He was apprenticed to Whispreys, who was still a little out of it, but he caught a mouse regardless. She's doing a bit better now, and I hope they'll get along and maybe bond more as time goes on, especially with them both having been abandoned kits in the past. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Condor Paw as he grows up. Nursery time! And speaking of abandoned kittens... Here is the four moon old missile kit who is daring and a lover of stories. This is the kit that I mentioned Holopath found shortly after Cinnamon Feather's death, and he pretty much is her dad even if he tries to keep his distance and he's cold. That's basically his her dad, it's just not official. She's also an absolute creature. <laughs> I kind of love her. Um, she tried to escape the camp and also jumped on Fernhart's tail. This girl has a ton of energy. She's still a kit, so there's really not too much to say, but I'll end her section by saying I really love her fuzzy face that she rolled. I love me some mustached kittens. Also in the nursery is the 34 moon old Hope Fern with her free one moon old kits who actually have a ton of personality. There's the attention-seeking snake kit who woke up Brindlehale just to talk about snails. Very important, I promise you. Then there's the bullying Lynx Kit who told her dad that no one likes him. We'll come back to this. And then finally, there's the charming Jump Kit who is a rare male torty. And since I'm playing on classic, not expanded mode, permanent conditions at birth don't exist. So I've been actually been rolling a 5% chance on kittens and stuff. And I have a side list of possible disabilities that they can be born with. Both ones that are in game and some that aren't in game just to add even more representation. And Jump Kit was actually rolled to be born mute. The clan still has general knowledge from Otter Tail and Jump Kit can still mostly communicate with paw movements and other things. Which is proven by the fact that he was telling his grandpa Brightstar so many stories which was adorable. I imagine it was done by like flapping his paws like a butterfly to say that he saw one. Now Hope Fern, you already know that Branch Deer caught her touching noses with a loner, but she also seems to have extreme insecurity and jealousy. She doesn't like Branch Deer being close to Condor Kit because she wants all his attention on her and their new kits. Hope Fern loves kits in general, but she doesn't really like Condor Paw. Branch Deer and Lightning Flight have a small barely there crush on each other and Hope Fern hates her. She gets really upset whenever Branch Deer is near her and keeps wanting to sabotage relationships. Speaking of that, after Pansy Bloom's warrior ceremony, Hope Fern decided on her own that she wanted to become a mediator. Maybe she found her warrior duties to be a bit too hard on her paws. Like I said, mediators don't necessarily have to be mediators in game. They could also do other things in the clan. She did train her battle moves before becoming one, so I do think she has some fight to her. Hope Fern and Branch Deer have a very complicated relationship because they both do love each other, but there's also a dislike that they have. It's honestly toxic, and I hope they either fix this or break up if this continues. It's not exactly healthy, and obviously Lynx Kit is picking up that there's tension, leading to her telling her dad that no, no one likes him. And Fernhart isn't exactly happy with how this relationship in general is going, trying to give advice and being upset that her daughter's being a bit bad in the relationship, because this is, a looking at the relationship, it seems that a lot of it stems from Hope Fern, relating to the things going bad. But we'll see in the future. That's everyone in the clan, so let's briefly check on the outsiders. 
Cloud J is now 71 moons old, and based on his statuses, he was trapped in a two-leg den for most of the time that he's been lost. But he very recently escaped, and he just thought that he saw Prickle Fleck, which whether or not he actually did, we'll find out. Cloud J makes me so sad. He had the status that he was hoping the clan's kits were well three times, and that really hurts because he obviously was worried about Yarrow Kit and Stag Kit. Next up, Flax Roar is also still lost and is now 62 moons old. Most of her statuses are about her desperately trying to find her way back and wondering how she'll survive without her clanmates. She seems either panicked or defeated mostly, and I think she ended up farther away from the clan than some other cats. She's been wandering and watching clouds roll, and I'm really hoping she finds her way home, but she seems really lost right now. And next up is Rainpaw, who is 24 moons old, and I'm so sad he was taken right before becoming a warrior. He's been wishing he could have a lot, but he's definitely on the move now. He heard a rumor about a group of large cats nearby and thought that she saw a clanmate, but it was just a loner. He has a lot of regrets and I feel really bad, but she also thought that she was visited by a star clan cat. So I'm wondering if possibly Lightfoot or Tulip Leopard is trying to guide her home? We'll have to see. And another lost apprentice is Stagpaw, who is 14 moons old, but he wasn't taken during the initial loss. He was apprenticed to Fernheart and Galaxy Clan and really struggled. He missed catching a bird after ignoring his mentor leading to him sulking. He also missed a rat and a rabbit and was told gathering moss would help him build strength, which I thought was kind of funny. That is very like Fernhart to make sure that he felt useful. <laughs> He was really struggling and he tried to convince Yeropaw to run away with him, which I'm choosing to interpret more as run and try to find Cloud J. He was lost shortly after this and he has regrets and has been daydreaming about returning home. I feel really bad for him and I hope that he comes back soon. And last of the cats taken by two legs was Cinder Petal, who is 159 moons old. And I am devastated. Cinder Petal can't die here, please. That would be such a sad ending for our last clan founder. Cinder Petal has been very tired and is saddened by the fact that he can't tell stories anymore. He's even questioned if he can find his way to Star Clan when he passes, and it's so sad. Stoneleaf also had a status that he was missing a loved one, and my heart hurts. He wishes he could check in on the clan's kits and wishes he had help getting around. And Cinder Petal just keeps making me the saddest out of any of these lost cats. Please come back. I really don't want you to die while being with two legs or lost in general. I really want Cinder Petal to make it home. And as for Silkfur, who I'm not redrawing, he is 46 moons old now. He's been thinking bitterly about his former clanmates and curses Galaxy Clan. He also thought he spotted Dark Whistle, which also concerns me. And like I said, he's still working with Mint Splash and seems to be practicing with fire now. Mint Splash has been whispering plans and I have a lot of fear. But yeah, that's the cat outside. But yeah, that's the cat's outside. Let's check out the other clans real quick. Leader-wise, we still have Bright Star, but in Creek Clan, their current leader is the 100 Moon Old Responsible Flip Star. Kestrel Star was murdered last year, and I forget if I said that last video. She was murdered by Thunder Spirit's brother, Starling Poppy, so Creek Clan's got some drama. Flip Star is doing good, though, and has many copy and pasted gray or yellow children. Bug Clan still has the charismatic 132 Moon Old Melody Star, and he actually just got a mate, and Elder Love is adorable. And sadly, Honey Star died to Green Cough, and the 68 Moon Old Loving Violet Star has taken over Sharp Clan. He had been Niles Cry's mate, who had been Deputy in the past. So yeah, very interesting. Also the youngest leader currently. But deputy time. There is Hollow Star in Galaxy Clan, then the 74 Moon Old Strange Cherry Lotus in Creek Clan. And she's actually the reincarnated Cherry Claw who was the child of Kestrel Star. Don't worry about it too much. Um, Bug Clan has the 91 Moon Old Fierce Sheep Tail who had been Melody Star's apprentice many moons ago. And Sharp Clan has the 50 Moon Old Shameless Leopard Lilac, who is the daughter of Honey Star, and she's currently in a relationship with a medicine cat, but she hasn't had kits yet. Onto the medicine cats, we have Flame Bear and Beetle Paw in Galaxy Clan, and then the Insecure 134 Moon Old Slate Aster, and the Faithful 90 Moon Old Hairstream are still around in Creek Clan. In Bug Clan, unfortunately, Pine Call passed away from Green Cough, and the Compassionate Dust Run is now the senior medicine cat at 47 moons old, with the calm 14 moon old Fallen Dapple as a new one. Side note, her name is really close to Fallow Dapple, but oh well, <laughs> I don't change names in the old version. Sharp Clan still has the confident 126 moon old Mint Dapple, lots of dapples, um, the daring 49 moon old Stoat Fur, and the 33 moon old Insecure Rabbit Sky. Stoat Fur is the medicine cat who's mates with the deputy right now. Now next year I plan to do some Dark Forest drama shenanigans. 
You know Freckle Spot and Mint Splash, but let's check in on who else is here and could possibly show up. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. In Creek Clan, there's still just Sage Patch and Lily Pelt, who, reminder, are evil gay cats, and Lily Pelt had been in the rogue group with Freckle Spot. In Sharp Clan, we have a lot. Decided mostly on coin flips, the Discord laughed at. Um, there's Maqua Star, her mate Fox, who approved of her actions and encouraged her. Stan Spot, who is the cat taunting and attempting to murder Raven Spot and Sage Fern, who is Bubble Specs killer and the attempted killer of Cloud J. And then in Bug Clan, we have this freak. Um, Cedar Blaze joined the clan very young, decided murder was fun, and caused chaos before getting killed by a dog. But yeah, some of these cats might show up. We'll have to see who pops up in the generated things. But that's year 13. I'll probably do quick updates of the other clan's positions of power every two videos or so. But yeah, this was interesting and very sad. We've had really good luck with lost cats, so I'm hopeful, but we'll have to see. Somehow no lost cats have died in-game, but I do have that lingering fear. They also don't count towards my max clan size, so don't worry about that. That being said, I think we are at max size again. Maybe we'll get a way to reduce numbers in-game, we'll see. Um, Branch Deer and Hope for an interest and concern me at the same time, because relationship drama is fun for content, but also I don't like it. <laughs> And I literally already have an idea for a PMV with them, but I don't really have time for it. Curse the concept of time going by. I have so many ideas for things and just not enough time to do them. Um, be prepared for year 14. I've started playing it already and it is a doozy. Possibly even the biggest year yet. Like I said, I'm doing Dark Forest shenanigans, so be prepared for something like the year that Bright Mask brought Stoneleaf to Star Clan, but with the current relevant plot points. Deaths and double deaths are fully possible, so you'll have to see what ends up happening. Galaxy Clan typically updates every last Sunday of the month, but this next one might get delayed a week. We'll have to see if I make it on time. Um, I'm really excited though, and I am itching to work on it. I also have the family tree link below, and I should update it within a week. Beyond that, thank you for watching and getting year one to 100k views. I am blown away. I didn't think that was possible. My socials are linked below, and if you'd like to support me other ways, my commissions are open, and my Redbubble is the last link, like I said. There's only one Galaxy Clam related thing but I should be adding more things to it eventually. I never really talk about my Redbubble despite being linked under every video because it's mostly just stuff that I wanted and made for myself, but it does have some other designs related to my persona or my fangin comic if you're interested. But yeah, sorry for the little ad at the end. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.